This is the hardest question I have ever seen on the ACT. The ACT math section has 60 questions that you have 60 minutes to answer, and they are arranged roughly in order of difficulty. That is, the early questions tend to be pretty easy, and the later questions tend to be pretty hard. Which means that a number 60 should be, if not the hardest question on the math test, one of the hardest questions on the math test. There are a couple ways that the test writers can make questions difficult, and one of them is just testing concepts that you wouldn't necessarily have learned by the time that you take the ACT as a high school junior. For example, probability is not something that we typically have a dedicated class for. It just kind of gets shoved into the end of a bunch of other classes. And so it's entirely possible that you could be reading a question like this number 60 here, which if you know about probability and how to compute combinations and permutations and stuff like that is not terribly difficult, but if you don't, would be basically impossible to answer. Let's take a look. Of the 16 cookies on a cookie platter, seven are chocolate chip, three are snickerdoodle, and six are gingerbread. By the way, this is in inspired by the last question from the December 2021 ACT, but not exactly that question, because I don't want to get in trouble with the copyright police. Grace will select three of these cookies, chosen at random, to eat. What is the probability that Grace will eat one of each of these three types of cookies? Let's presume that that first cookie is actually a chocolate chip cookie. It says there are seven such cookies, and so you could imagine that we have a seven out of 16 chance of selecting that chocolate chip cookie. After that, we move on to the snickerdoodle. There are three of those, and now we only have 15 cookies left, because we already picked out a chocolate chip first. And then after that, we've got these six gingerbread cookies. But again, that's going to be six out of 14 because we've already picked two other cookies. At this point, you might confidently and happily start canceling out as much as you possibly can. And you would get a probability in that case of three out of 80, which is great, except that's not even an answer choice. The reason it's not an answer choice is that although it is true that we have a 3 80ths chance of selecting a random chocolate chip cookie, then a random snickerdoodle, then a random gingerbread cookie, that's just one particular arrangement. There's no special reason it has to go chocolate chip cookie, snickerdoodle, then gingerbread cookie. It could just as easily be chocolate chip cookie, gingerbread, then snickerdoodle. Or for that matter, snickerdoodle could have been first, and then there are two ways to arrange the chocolate chip cookies and the gingerbread cookies. Or finally, of course, the gingerbread cookies could have gone first, and then we have two different arrangements of the chocolate chip cookies and the snickerdoodles. In other words, this three out of 80 probability for that one particular arrangement of chocolate chip cookie, snickerdoodle, then and gingerbread cookie actually needs to be multiplied by six to account for these six different arrangements that are possible for these three cookies. Again, if you know about probability and counting, you know that, that six is coming from three factorial, the number of different ways to arrange three objects. Taking into account those six different arrangements, we actually get a probability of 18 out of 80, which simplifies to nine over 40, and there it is. We just correctly answered the hardest question on the ACT. Even if you hadn't ever seen this concept in class, there are a couple lessons we can take away from a problem like this. Never just sit there and stare at the test. Anytime you're sitting there and not working, that's the test writers winning. Always keep your pencil moving and just try stuff out. If you have even a basic familiarity with probability, you know that we want to set up fractions that look like this. Some part, some number of outcomes we want, divided by the total. You probably also know that when we select multiple items, we want to make sure that we count down because basically our bucket of possible outcomes is going to go down by one every time we choose some object. And finally, persevere. If you get an answer that's not one of the answer choices, that's actually the test doing you a favor. In this case, it would have been awful if three over 80 was actually an answer choice because in all likelihood it would have trapped us. The fact that three over 80 wasn't an answer choice drove us to keep going and eventually find the correct answer. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content about math, math, problems, ACT math, SAT math, or anything like that.